recording. <clears throat> Greetings and blessings. Craft Lashley, the spiritual boxer. I'm going to talk about boxing again, as I always do. I've got a cup of coffee. And talking about how we train people. And it's like I was saying earlier on. Somebody, I can train the basics within six months. No problem, get the basics down. Once you've got the basics down, you're basically just teaching yourself, you're training yourself. You don't need a trainer once you know the basics. Just keep working on the basics. And I think that's what a lot of people forget. They don't go back to the basics to think they don't work, but they do. And then you've got to build mental strength. Now that's the side of the game I really like, that mental strength. And what is mental strength? <laughs> Not believing what other people tell you. You know, it's, I can give like examples of not believing people. Now that don't work. Of how you basically gotta find out for yourself. I remember when I got knocked out by Clemenson, if I listened to what people were telling me, I'd have never, I would have been finished and I would have been washed up and I would have been chinny. But I never believed them. I made a mistake, I got caught. I understand that, I understand the game. My mental strength, or my mental belief in, he couldn't beat me again, because I won't make them the same mistakes. And nobody knows you better than you, but most people listen to other people's opinion of you. And the amount of experts in boxing is amazing. So many people used to come up and say to me, do you know what I'd do if I was you? No, I don't really care because you're not me and you wouldn't do it if you was me. <laughs> it's just that simple. I said, I'd be doing it. But I think mental strength is that belief in that you can be better than what you are. And not listen to anybody else. Who am I today? Who do I want to be tomorrow? Because tomorrow's going to come. So who do you want to be? You're going to prepare today for tomorrow, for the future. And these are the things like boxing taught me. I'm fighting in three weeks' time. So I'm preparing today for three weeks' time. I'm not thinking about three weeks' time. I'm just thinking about today and getting today's work done. It's like that saying, don't think about your opponent, let your opponent think about you. You just do what you need to do in the gym and on the night, come in in the best condition you can be in and put on the best performance you can put on, you can display. Because you've only got that night, that moment. So you might as well live it to the fullest and enjoy it. And don't care what people say, don't care what people think, because whatever you do, people aren't going to like you. It's just that simple. It's like, look at Mayweather, brilliant boxer, doesn't get hit, very rarely gets hit. People hate him. Why? Oh, he's boring. Why? Because he doesn't stand in trade. Because he boxes. And then... You've got other people like um, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury. Some people think they're brilliant. Some people think they're shit. And that's what boxing is. And that's what life is. It basically, people's opinions and people's opinions of you don't matter. The only opinion is you should have is of yourself. And who you are and know who you are. And that's what boxing, I think, brings to the table. It shows you who you are. 
and this thing that's going around Facebook about the stoppage with Lee Woods, I think it was, and Ben Johnson, Ben, whoever he is, stopping the fight. Now, there's very few people being in a corner, and there's even few people that's been in a ring. You can actually see what's going on in this person's mind, like, nobody knows his boxer better than his trainer. You know, the boxer knows and believes he can go on because the want to the want to win, but the trainer is there to protect you. And he threw the towel in, that was his decision that he made. And was it right? Was it wrong? Some are going to say it was right and some are going to say it was wrong. This is it because anybody who wants to have a go at someone, they'll always find something to have a go at them about. And I think, I don't know the man personally, but I think he gets a lot of stick. Some of it could be justified, most of it's not. But that's life. And to have a strong mind, you ain't got to care about that. The people who know you, know you. And if you know yourself, you know when you've done something wrong, you know when something's not right and you know you can do better. So do it, do better. But like I say, in back to boxing, <clears throat> that mental strength, the little triggers. It's like when I went to the press conference with Nicky Piper. I only found out the night before the press conference. And in the press conference, I found out he had six weeks to get ready for me. And I only found out the night before. We both had the same manager, Frank Warren. And I just, there was a switch in my head that just basically turned on. He can't beat me. They've had to give him six weeks to get ready to fight me. How can he beat me? And when I went into training, I trained so hard that he couldn't beat me. Even over 20 rounds, 30 rounds, I'd have been in that same position, knackered, but he wouldn't have beat me. That's that mental strength. I didn't look at it as a weakness. I looked at it as a positive. Yeah, I've only, had, I've only got about three weeks to get ready. He's had six weeks, but he can't beat me because that's what they've had to give him. That's all the little voices were saying in my head. He can't beat me. And he didn't. <laughs> and then Frank kind of like stalled my career over that and that's kind of like a, a bad thing and I don't want that talking to Theo because I think I know he's got the talent to go further than I went with the right with the right people behind him I think he'd be a, he'll, he'll be a unified champion not a, just a piece of it, but a unified champion. He's boxing on Friday, which is the 24th of this month, which is February, I think. Yeah. And I think, hopefully, it'll be his last run on this scene and we can go a professional. But there was some be I've been told about they're not turning anybody over in the British Boxing Board of Control unless they've had an amateur career or a few amateur fights, which I think's wrong because it's all boxing. It's just different organisations run it. You know, some are licensed by whoever is the licensing body. And then they call it not boxing. If somebody knows how to look after themselves and handle themselves in a ring, in the boxes, you know, under the Marquis of Queensbury rules. My, my speech went weird then. I struggled trying to grasp my words or pronounce them properly. So that's a bit weird. That's just how life is. Weirdness and embrace your weirdness 
if you know all boxes are mad you have to be mad to want a box it's just one of them things but i always say embrace your madness embrace that crazy you know this world's hard man and it's harsh and it's unforgiving if you let it or you can just not bother and like people say it's easy for you why is it easy for me you know what i mean been alone most of my life so it's one of them <sighs> would I rather be a part of the crew and society and be a miserable sod or be happy by myself you know it's the easy choice for me I make easy choices but I stick to them it's like one of the choices I made, which I don't regret, but it was a difficult decision to live with, was retirement. I didn't know what retirement meant at the time, but afterwards, boy, talk about mental state. It was not in a very good place. I'm not going to say I suffer with depression. I lived with it. I don't suffer with anything, you know, I just live with it, it's, it is what it is, I'm not here for a long time, it feels like I've been here for ages though, so I might as well enjoy the time I'm here, and I've been smiling, because I'm, I'm a happy person, I'm a happy bunny, I'm training the kid who wants to learn to box, and he's got the talent to go all the way. And all the, all talent is, is having that mindset to stick to something and give it 100% focus. That's what talent is. Working on what you know. It's like, you look at anybody who's got a good job. How many times do you think they've thrown that job? Once or twice, they've thrown it thousands, tens, thousands. You know what I mean? 50,000 times they've thrown the job. The one tools, work on them. You've got to work on them. It's practice, practice, practice. Then try it in sparring. But practice it in your shadow boxing first. Then try and turn the punches on the backs. And then try and put it in sparring. And that's why this one, I don't like wars in sparring. I like learning things where you're trying these punches that you've been practicing in the gym, in sparring in the ring. And if you get caught, you're not going to get your head taken off because both of you are learning. Yeah, if you drop your hand when you go to the body, I'm going to hit you on the head, but I'm not going to knock you out. I'm just going to tap it and let you know you're doing something where I can hit you. And then you get better sparring, you get better boxing, you get better fights. And then the crowds start coming back. But I've heard with this YouTube thing, the crowd are back. Is it because they put on 50-50 fights? Or is it just because of the way boxing is going now? It's more, I don't know, spectacular people who can run off the mouths, people who've got big following on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. You know, these are the ones who seem to me that people gravitate towards nasty people, people who are slagging and running down people. They don't seem to gravitate to people who are trying to build people up and, you know, put them onto the next level, a higher level, instead of, instead of bringing them down and dragging them down. You know, let's big up people for trying, for helping. You know, and it's like, I know I'm going to go off on one. This knife crime business. Bring boxing back into schools. That would be probably one of the best ways, quickest ways and easiest ways to get kids off from carrying knives is bring back boxing back into schools. You know, it teaches you discipline. It teaches you how to defend yourself. It gives you that confidence. So... That's it for today anyway. 
I'm at the gym later on. And like I say, Theo's fighting on Friday. Um, I think it's a sellout. So, I don't know, I heard that. But you might be able to get in on the door. It's the Egan Suite in Woodhouse Leeds. So, I'm getting some faces pulled up now. <laughs> and yeah, hopefully it'll be his last fight on this format and we'll be boxing under the code British Boxing Board of Control. <laughs> I can't keep my mouth shut over that one. I won't go further into that and at the moment yet because I've been advised to renew my training license and at the moment I'm having a bit of a a wobble on that one. But if Theo goes pro, or when he goes pro, if he goes with the British Boxing Board of Control, I won't get my trainer's license. But there might be other ways to do it. You know, maybe get a, a different license from a different organisation that the British Boxing Board of Control allowed to fight in this country. Who knows? Because I knew somebody who had a Belgian license. So that might be a, an option or an idea. But we'll see. Anyway, if you like the vibe, then subscribe. Bye.